The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. Thoughtful viewers, today on Stop Animal Cruelty, we bring you further excerpts from the award-winning documentary, Foul Play, directed by Adam Durand and produced by Mercy for Animals, a U.S.-based, nonprofit animal advocacy organization. The film, which is being presented in three parts, exposes the utterly inhumane treatment of hens by the egg industry. In April 2009, Foul Play won the Best Documentary Short Category at the Fallbrook Film Festival in California, USA, and deservedly so. The film leaves a deep impression on all viewers as it shows how merciless farming practices mean a profoundly nightmarish existence for chickens. In part two of our presentation of excerpts from this important film, the Mercy for Animals investigators continue detailing their horrific and ghastly findings at intensive egg production facilities. We're in the bottom of the building where the manure pits are. All the cages are directly above us. One of the hens has fallen out of the cage. There are other dead hens around, but she's still alive. She's trapped in the manure. There's flies everywhere. The manure is wet, so her body's stuck and she can't get out. We're gonna um, try to pull her out right now. It was shocking that they could, that she could be alive in the first place. Oh, her whole body's just sunk into there. Her body had been buried so deep and for so long in this wet manure that it had engulfed her body like a quicksand, like she had sucked down into it. The flies and bugs from the manure are all over her skin. Oh. breath was really shallow and and it's like her last moments of life you know she's dying and I wanted to get her out of there really fast I wanted her to see that there was something better or a kinder world it feels like no life should have to exist I'm feeling nothing but pain and suffering We've rescued a number of hens during the course of our investigation, but one case really sticks out to me in particular, and this is a case that illustrated to me just how expendable and just how replaceable these animals are. This is the story of a bird that we later named Hope, and Hope we found in a trash can. She was waiting to die, and had we not been there, if we had not come to her aid, she would have slowly slipped away on top of others of her kind that had already died, that had already passed away. I reached into the bin and I, I lifted her out. we took her to a veterinarian to be treated. Today, Hope lives on just a wonderful farm sanctuary. If somebody would just spend an hour with any chickens that are allowed to behave like chickens, they would see that they, they show joy, they show fear, they show worry. They're really not all that different from your pet dogs and your pet cats. I have a duck named Wuggles and this chicken named Onyx, and they have not left each other's side since the day they met. Where you see that duck, you see that chicken. They are just a bonded pair.
Chickens have a surprisingly sophisticated communication system. They actually have 25, 30 calls that scientists have discovered. Of course, I would suspect the chickens know more than that number because chickens are tuned into chickens like no other animal is. One of the behaviors that you never see in a chicken in a battery cage is perching. But if you go to a sanctuary where you've taken chickens who've been bred for generations in captivity and they've been rescued, and suddenly they have trees available to them, up they go. If you watch chickens long enough, it's easy to see that they enjoy things and they also have things they don't like. If they have senses, they have feelings, they run towards a food item that's offered to them, they're anticipating the reward, they're looking forward to the pleasure of it, as we would. Similarly, they hear a, an alarm call, they run away, they're terrified, they want to get away from that. They have feelings and thoughts much like we do. We have the old expression, bird brain. For a long time, until very recently, it was thought that birds really had very little part of their brain that was devoted to anything other than instinct. But about five years ago, a group of scientists came out saying, we need a whole new terminology for the bird brain, because actually, they have a different part of their brain that's, that's got all the complexity of thinking and feeling that mammals have. The ancestor of the modern-day chicken is actually the red jungle fowl. This is a bird that looks much like a chicken, a different plumage color, lives in big, huge jungles in Southeast Asia with complex trees. They fly up to perch. Uh, they are wary of predators, and they're scratching around in the ground for food of various sorts. Studies of chickens and other species find that despite hundreds of generations in captive artificial environments, they retain all of the behaviors and needs that their ancestors had. If you look at the red jungle fowl, the wild ancestor of today's domesticated chicken, they laid about 25 eggs per year. Humans began breeding these animals for maximum egg production. By the 1940s, the egg industry had created a bird that could lay 100 eggs per year. Of course, the industry wasn't satisfied with that. Today's birds now lay an average of 260 eggs per year about 10 times the number of eggs originally laid by their ancestors. The amount of calcium required to produce that many eggs is tremendous. Uh, so if the birds are just cranking out egg after egg after egg, they're constantly depleting their calcium supplies. And as a result, they're suffering from osteoporosis, broken bones, etc. We'll return after these brief messages with more from Foul Play, a film on the barbarism of the egg industry. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. This is the Stop Animal Cruelty series on Supreme Master Television. Our program today features excerpts from Foul Play, an award-winning documentary by Mercy for Animals, revealing the brutal and ruthless treatment of hens by the egg industry. In chicken production, there's two populations. There's the egg-laying population and there's the meat population. And the meat producers are selected, they're bred for very rapid growth, growth that's so fast and so bulky that their skeletons have great difficulty in supporting their weight. A male chick's never gonna lay an egg, so male chicks are discarded in egg-laying operations. They grow too slow to be raised profitably for meat, so these birds are thrown away. Within a couple of days of hatching, the, the baby birds are taken to be sexed. A factory worker picks up these birds, tossing the males roughly off to be disposed of, or tossing the females into the group that's going to be allowed to survive. 
they may be tossed into essentially a giant um, wearing blender, a giant food processor to be macerated and crushed alive. A common practice is to simply throw them in a pile in a bin and let them pile up and they suffocate beneath the pile. It is so thoughtless, so horrendous. It completely disregards the capability of physical suffering that a newborn has. The females go off to be grown in the pullet sheds. A lot of people think of eggs as being an innocent byproduct of chickens, something that doesn't involve the killing of birds. However, in modern egg production, these birds are sent to slaughter when their production declines, when they're no longer profitable for these industries they're disposed of. The chickens are thrown into crates and shipped to the slaughterhouse, where they go through the same sort of cruel, shackling, stunning, and throat slicing that chickens raise for meat face. But now, more and more, because these birds are so abused, they're so battered, they're so frail, they're simply being disposed of. There is another method other than simply going through the slaughter plant to dispose of spent hens. And it's known as a CO2 gassing operation. And it's done in kind of a, a killing cart where the hens are ripped out of their cages painfully, no gentle handling, stuffed into these carts, and the lid is slammed down, locked tight, and then the gas is, 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 uh, runs into the container. Dying by CO2 is essentially suffocating. With luck, they are killed outright. But because in the interest of saving money, they may overcrowd these gassing chambers, they may not all be killed, and in fact, when they dump all the dead birds out, some of them, in fact, are not dead, and have gone through this, this terror, this discomfort, uh, the strangulation of feeling that you are suffocating, and yet survive it. Hi, girls. Look at how cozy you are. Well, let's put it this way. Consuela's a survivor. Look at how cozy you are. We had taken some shingles off of our garage roof. I, for whatever reason, told my husband that I would wake up at 5.30 in the morning and go with him to the dump on this day. As we were leaving the dump, all of a sudden we saw something running off to the side of the truck. And we said, oh my gosh, that's a chicken. She was very fast and she did not want anybody to catch her. Initially we thought she was bloody because she didn't have many feathers at all. Her whole chest was completely bare and red. Her whole, um, all along her back and her bottom um, was just red. And it ended up that she wasn't bloody chicken, but she was just extremely sunburned. Finally, between the two of us had got her. My husband was talking to the woman on his way out and he said, did you know that you have chickens running around up there? And she said, oh yeah, that happens every once in a while. He said, well, where do they come from? And she said, well, when they get gassed at the farm, some of them don't die. You like it? So many people 
think it was this, you know, oh, it was so amazing, it was so heroic that you did this. And honestly, I can't imagine someone not stopping and getting her out of that situation. Consuela has changed me in the sense that I've just learned to appreciate chickens as individuals. Chickens are amazing. I had no idea that what chickens were like. Like they're, they have their own little personalities. Yes, chickens are truly amazing. Their treatment of hens in egg factory farms is extremely brutal and savage. No living beings deserve this sort of fate. If we all change to the organic vegan diet, the callous and heartless egg industry will end immediately. Factory farms will close and all of our animal friends can once again live in beauty and love. Next Tuesday on Stop Animal Cruelty will be part three of our presentation of excerpts from the award-winning documentary, Foul Play. Please join us then. For more details on Foul Play, please visit www.foulplaymovie.com. The Foul Play DVD is available at the same website. Caring viewers, thank you for your company on today's program. Enlightening Entertainment is up next after Noteworthy News. May your life be filled with heavenly love, light, and blessings. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.